What is happening, fellow Texorcians? Welcome to Setup Wars episode 311. That's also the last time I'm calling you guys Texorcians. Either way, we have a pretty packed episode for you guys today, so sit back and relax, because you know what time it is. Is your PC stuck on DDR4? Well, if that's the case, you're losing out on extra performance. That's because DDR5 provides up to 87% more bandwidth than DDR4. This means more FPS in games, shorter load times, data transfers, downloads, and improved refresh rates. Crucial DDR5 desktop memory ditches the flashy RGB heat spreaders in exchange for optimization and efficiency. If you're someone who values performance over aesthetics while saving money at the same time, then these memory sticks are for you. They're basically engineered to work right out of the box in your gaming PC or workstation. No overclocking required. To learn more, click the link below. We're kicking off the episode strong with David's awesome gaming room. He's a software engineer from Basel, Switzerland, who built the setup for gaming, coding, and photo editing. He started off with a 3D model and brought it to life within six months. I always recommend people to brainstorm or draw their setup somewhere. You don't have to 3D model if you don't have the experience, but you can always sketch it on a piece of paper. It's always a good idea to bring your vision to life because it's a lot easier to plan. We got a beautiful TIE Fighter triple monitor layout with a 34 inch ultrawide in the middle, sandwiched by dual 24 inches in vertical mode. All monitors are hooked up against the Linman desk with dual Alex units, but there's also a floating shelf that he mounted against the wall on the right side, which was a really great idea for additional storage and a place for his PC. A floating shelf looks so much cleaner than a floor shelf. He kept the surface very clean with wireless peripherals and a stream deck for quick access to shortcuts. Now there aren't any speakers for the setup so he relies on the G733 Lightspeed headset from Logitech for all of his audio needs. Powering the entire setup is a very clean build in the O11 Dynamic. We got a Ryzen 7 3800X paired with an MSI RTX 2080 Ti. I do love the addition of the plants in the setup. It adds a bit of greenery while concealing some of the cables from your PC. He also did a really good job on the decorating. Everything is nicely spaced out and balanced with great lighting. We got RGB strips under the desk and in the cabinets for a nice underglow and there are even lights inside the shelves to make stuff inside of them pop. I can only imagine the amount of RGB strips you used for this room. I commend you for the hard work you put into this setup. I absolutely love the vibes of this room. Thank you David so much for sharing this with us. Speaking of vibes, this next setup from Jan is nothing but. Let me just start off and say that I'm loving the room layout. He's got a cozy gaming setup in the corner and his bed on the other side with a TV mounted on the ceiling. This allows him to rotate the TV in any direction he wants. I'm already loving the use of the 3DR panels here. He made sure to cover the whole wall and the shelf on the side so it looks more complete this way. I also love the function of the shelf. It not only provides more storage, but also separates the setup from the rest of the room. It kind of adds a bit of privacy, which is cool. So Jan is a carpenter from the Netherlands and he loves to game on his spare time. So he wanted to build a space where he can do that and enjoy watching content. The setup has progressed over the past six years to a point where he was happy enough to finally submit it for setup wars. We got that T monitor layout with a 34 inch ultra wide as the main and a secondary 27 inch in vertical mode for multitasking. Below that, we got another set of wireless peripherals, the Logitech G915 paired with a G Pro wireless and a PowerPlay mouse pad to keep his mouse charged up at all times. Jan is a bit of an audiophile, it seems, judging by the audio gear in the setup. He's got a pair of big boy HS8 studio monitors with a couple of headphones, the Logitech G935s for gaming and the Drop Hi-Fi Mans for music. Very nice choices, by the way. I do see that you use some raceways to cover up the wires on the ground and the rest of the cables are tucked away underneath the desk. Very nice job. The PC that's powering the setup is actually sitting on the extended part of the countertop, but if you look closely, you can see that he cut out a piece of the table and used it to cover the shelf next to it so it blends in together. A very nice mod and a very nice gaming setup. Thank you, Jan, for sharing this with us. All right, let's change it up real quick and take a look at a console setup. We don't get that many of these, so I gotta show the console players some love once in a while. So this is Jordan's setup and he doesn't like to choose sides. He owns both a skin PS5 and an Xbox Series S that he keeps on top of an RGB mouse pad. That's a pretty clever way of adding some accent lighting around the console. Each console is hooked up to its very own dedicated monitor. Both the PS5 and Xbox are connected to a 27 inch, 240 Hertz LG display. 
why is my main question. You do know that both consoles are capped at 120 hertz, right? I don't know why you spend that extra money on double the refresh rate when you could have saved that and put it towards something else. The TV right above is used for watching content and it uses a dedicated sound bar, but each console also has its own audio source. The Astro A50s for the PS5 and the A20s for the Xbox. I also noticed that you have an extended mouse pad, but no keyboard or mouse. Did you buy that just for your smartphone? I mean, if so, you could have just picked up a cheap phone stand, right? And since we're on the topic of picking things up, I personally think the setup would have looked nicer with the Xbox on the right side. That way it balances with the PS5 on the opposite side, and you can just move the controllers in the middle. In fact, you can pick up these low profile controller stands and keep all four controllers underneath both monitors. The setup will look more balanced and symmetrical, but either way, it's a very clean console setup with lots of potential. Thank you, Jordan, for sharing this with us. Coming in number three is Rui and his insanely clean and minimal gaming setup. So Rui is a technician from London who built a setup for gaming and photo editing. He does everything on the 34 inch ultra wide that's mounted on the wall and below that he's got some wireless peripherals. The Logitech MX Keys advanced keyboard with an MX Master 3 for productivity but he does pull out the Corsair M65 Elite for gaming. He kept the surface so clean but my favorite part on the desk has to be the headphone anger. All right, this dude used a crystal head vodka bottle to hold his headset. Pretty clever, if you ask me. It blends in beautifully with the style of the setup. Aside from the SteelSeries headset, he does have a pair of Sanyun speakers that he uses for watching content and listening to music. Cable management, as expected, is pretty much flawless. I mean, there is one loose cable for the outlet that can use a raceway, but it's not a huge deal. I gotta give Rui some credit on the amazing shot of his PC. I mean, look at this thing. It looks like a professional magazine photo. Superb work, my guy. The PC's performance, however, is just as good as it looks. We have a semi water cool build featuring the Ryzen 7 5800X and an RTX 2060 Super. I do love the angle of the graphics card. It's very refreshing to see something different once in a while. It's so awesome to see the progress of your setup from the very beginning when you only had just a laptop. This is one hell of a clean gaming setup. Thank you, Rui, for sharing this with us. Wrapping up the episode is Julio's insane, fully custom living room gaming setup that he built for himself and his wife. He's calling it the Oasis. He's an IT implementation manager from Miami who always wanted to build his dream setup for work and gaming, but never really got the opportunity to do so. Well, that was until the pandemic hit and he started working from home. All he had to do was convince his wife to use a living room to build a setup and after a few no's, she finally said yes to the idea of Julio building a classy yet relaxing type setup that will blend in with their interior decoration. I mean, he definitely delivered on that promise. Look at the setup with the lights off. It looks like an art gallery. This actually took him a full eight months to build. We have the beauty setup on the left and the beast setup on the right, as he calls it. The wife is rocking a 34 inch ultra wide that she uses for work and online shopping, while Julio is rocking that 49 inch super ultra wide from Samsung for gaming and working. I like that they both stuck to a single ultra wide to keep things minimal and less cluttered. Both setups are built on two Salgen countertops that are combined together with some Alex units to create a giant corner desk. The wife's setup is powered by an i7 5820K with an RTX 2070 Super, while Julio's setup is run by 9900K and an RTX 3060 Ti. I might be wrong on this one, but I'm pretty sure there's some slight GPU bottlenecking here. Okay, I do want to talk about the custom work for a little bit because it's beyond anything I've seen on the show. Starting with the amazing RGB cloud on the ceiling. This is hands down the cleanest job I have seen. They were able to run the cables in the ceiling through the custom panels that were made by him and his dad. That's why you can't see any cables. Moving over to the art panels on the wall. So the three pieces of wood panels were customized by painting the frames in silver and dipping them in glitter to achieve this shiny effect. He also added some RGB lights behind the three panels and the four mosaic mirrors on the adjacent walls to make them stand out at night. Okay, I do wanna mention the angel wings on the ceiling with the chandelier as it holds a lot of sentimental value for the setup. You see, Julio's son tragically died in a car accident on February 24th, 2022. A week before he passed, Nick and his dad were setting up his room to submit for setup wars, and he mentioned he wanted to add a cloud ceiling to the Oasis. Julio promised him that he would do it, and he did. They also added the angel wings up top to constantly remind him that Nick is looking down from the heavens, very proud at his dad's accomplishment. I just wanna say I'm deeply sorry for your loss. As a parent, I can only imagine the amount of pain that both of you have went through. Losing a child is 
one of our biggest fears and I know that Nick is looking down and smiling and happy that you did put up the RGB cloud. I want to, it will be an honor for me to present the 50th seal of approval to your family. I know that Nick would have been extremely thrilled. If you're watching this video, Julio, please send an email to set up worst prizes or reach out on Discord so that I can send the plaque to you. Uh, thank you for sharing this amazing setup with us.